Good day, dear Louisians. A top on your shoulder for reaching week six of our discussion. By the way, how was your week five learning Salazar's Pantayong Pananaw? Are you in agreement of the concepts and ideas of Pantayong Pananaw in indigenizing history? I hope that you learned a lot from the strengths and criticisms of the said approach. This week, we will be introduced to a new topic on social sciences in the real world and to have an essential understanding that ideas and concepts in the social sciences can be utilized to address various social phenomena in the Philippine society. So come now and let us again begin our adventure. And having said that, these are the learning objectives that we must have to attain at the end of the lesson. First, explain how the social sciences can be utilized to address social concerns. Second, appreciate the different professions within the various disciplines of the social sciences. Third, discuss the importance of good governance in strengthening the Filipino nation. Fourth, describe how resources are effectively distributed to the society. Fifth, determine the challenges of the modern family. And sixth, explain the phenomenon of environmentalism. In the previous chapter, we examined the varying social ideas of prominent Filipino thinkers in the 19th century, from the works of renowned illustrados to heroic revolutionists. We have also familiarized ourselves in the modern day ideas of established scholars that have influenced various disciplines in the social sciences, such as in history, and psychology. And we have shown that Filipino thinkers did not merely copy or translate Western ideas in the social sciences and apply this concept to Philippine society. Instead, we have proven that we Filipinos have our own distinct way of looking at our society using our own lens and perspective as we appropriate local concepts to the Philippine culture and society. And so, in this chapter, we shall discuss how several key disciplines in the social sciences can be applied in different Philippine scenario, such as in politics, economics, and society. We shall also introduce ourselves to the recent concepts of multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity and how these perspectives can be utilized in solving various issues in our society. And lastly, we shall analyze the significant roles being played by the social sciences in addressing critical issues that upset the balance of the society. How do social scientists strive to improve the condition of our society? We have learned from the previous lessons how each discipline of the social sciences contributes a great deal of knowledge in understanding our society. But how about the actors that are at work in understanding our society? Now the picture that you are seeing shows the social scientists and their professions. These professionals help in understanding the society in general while exerting efforts to address several pressing issues of our times. And so, this lesson will take us into several societal issues of our time and how the professions of the social sciences make things happen toward addressing these concerns. So we shall now look at how the various professions in the social sciences operate in the real world. Although the societal issues presented in this lesson are far from being complete, 
they more or less give us insights on how its profession within the realm of the social sciences can be utilized to better the conditions of our society. What do you know about good governance? How good governance can be safeguarded? Let us now discuss the concept of good governance and the works of social scientists in relation to governance. Section 9 of Article 2 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution states that the state shall promote a just and dynamic social order that will ensure the prosperity and independence of the nation and free the people from poverty through policies that provide adequate social services, promote full employment, a rising standard of living, and an improved quality of life for all. And it is quite obvious that the state and all governmental affairs pervade the everyday existence of its citizens. With the existence of norms and laws, the state, through the government, legitimizes the acquisition and exercise of power in the society. And it should be noted that the state is an abstract concept because the real work of the daily implementation of power is done by the government composed of individuals who exercise power in the name of the state. And you can see here that the presence of government is very important for the society to become a place where it people can really live in harmony and peace. And a government that will really push through for good governance okay, will look and take into consideration the people of the society. In all the workings and undertakings of the government lies the importance of political scientists in their attempt to analyze and discover the different factors underlying political occurrences and conditions as they deal principally on political theories, systems, institutions, and order. So we can see here the role of a political scientist in relation to governance. However, in as much as political scientists concern themselves on governmental structures and functions, as well as on the various political mechanisms, other social scientists are also of importance when studying human behavior and interaction involving political processes and activities. And these social scientists include sociologists, okay, psychologists, and economists, among others, since political science intersects with other fields like history, psychology, economics, law, and sociology. So there is what we call multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity in the study of governance. It is not just the political scientists who are involved in the study of governmental structures and functions, but also other social scientists can be involved in the study of the government. Now, experts in the field of political science, such as public policy analysts, must look into the different problems that constantly plague the Philippine government. For example, the rampant or the existence of graft and corruption. Graft and corruption here is of utmost threat to the integrity of the entire bureaucracy, right? The existence of graft and corruption will really put a dirt in the political activities of the government. Okay? 
it happens because funds here intended for the general well-being of the people are funneled to bogus projects or are being embezzled by cunning politicians or corrupt politicians. Ayan. Not only in graft and corruptions, but also the taxes that are being collected from the people are deliberately misappropriated to ineffectual projects to be in use by these politicians for their own luxury and comfort. And so, professions for graduates of political science may include social policy program officer, legislative analyst, political aide, lobbyist, diplomat, or even politicians. When we say legislative analyst, this social scientist may help evaluate commercial and labor market distortions that have resulted in the low productivity of agricultural sector. Meanwhile, when we say a social policy program officer, this social scientist may assist in the proper implementation of land reforms in the Philippines to avoid poor beneficiaries from reselling their land to elites by way of spurious arrangement. And as politicians or policy makers, they must be able to identify which government regulations are beneficial to the public and crucial to the Philippine development because useless laws must be revised or amended. And in revising or amending laws, those policy makers must bear in mind the public good, the people, and the laws must be for the public good. Now I want to show you a picture here. And it is a caricature of Filipino politicians. Can you name some of them? Can you identify who are these politicians in this caricature? Right. Now, aside from various government agencies, other institutions that employ graduates of political science include also law firms, universities and colleges, and even consultancy companies and research organizations. And some may even land in job or land jobs in private businesses, in media and banking industries. It is really manifested that those who are graduate of political science can land into different jobs in the government, in the academe, in the business, in media, and even in banking industry. Let us also talk about toward an effective distribution of resources. Short, let us talk about economics. Now, in what way do you think that resources are effectively distributed? And who are the social scientists that work into the field of economics? Let us become aware of economics and the social scientists who work in this field. Bear in mind that one major aim of economics is to fulfill the needs of the people in the society as it concerns itself in the production, distribution, and consumption of material goods and services. And in determining the type of economic system, social scientists or economists in particular may proceed in investigating four major directions that includes economic theory, methodology and measurement, economic policy, and economic history. When we talk about economic theory, it pertains to the fundamental tenets of behavioral patterns of humans within the ambit of economic system. It means that economic theory look into the problems 
of economics. Okay? Particularly if there is a problem in the economic system of a given society. It looks into the problems of how resources that are limited can be effectively distributed to all the members of the society. Now, the performance of an economic system and the changes within the economy can be evaluated and appraised by financial and economic analysts using applicable methodology and measurements or economic indicators. Because with faster economic growth, it is expected that the percentage of families living below the poverty line could really show a mark of decrease, of decrease over time. If there is really what we call economic growth in the society or in the Philippines in particular. Yan. Taking into consideration the Philippine setting, our economists in the government may have to formulate applicable solutions in order to address several pressing economic problems that include the efficient distribution of wealth, the rising incidence of poverty, increasing unemployment figures, and inflation. Because it is sad to say that in the name of progress, we seem to have lost control of technological advances leading to what we call a large-scale pollution of our natural resources. Limited na nga, nasisira pa. Okay? And if you go to the metro, okay, the sprawling metropolis has also sustained thousands of informal settlers who are really living under subhuman conditions. When we say subhuman conditions, talagang nasa baba sila ng laylayan okay, ng tinatawag nating social structure. If you ever heard the, the kasabihan na mas mahirap pa sa daga. Okay? And so, with the help of our economic think tanks, as they say, or group of organized intellectuals okay, in relation to economics, with the objective of providing advice on a diverse range of policy issues, the government must really take an active role in alleviating the plight of our Filipinos, especially in poverty, especially the problem of poverty. Yan. And aside from key positions in the government, graduates of economics may also become involved in the finance sector, such as banking, accountancy, tax, and insurance. And others may also be employed in the field of management, marketing, human resources, advertising, even in the academe. To help really okay, formulate or contribute in making policies that will really address the problem of limited resources that should be distributed effectively to all the members of the society. Especially nowadays, ba? we are in this time of pandemic. At marami talaga tayong problema including the basic needs of the people. Especially those who are really very much affected of this pandemic. Yung mga umaasa halimbawa ng kita sa pang-araw-araw na nawawalan ng trabaho, ng kita because of many declaration of quarantine. Diba? Yan. Yung mga ECQs na sinasabi natin. And they really need help. And in order for them to really at least makabangon and overcome this pandemic, we should really work together in order for them at least to be given help, okay, 
lalong lalo na sa atin na sa tingin natin meron pa naman tayo kakayahan para tumulong, why not? Okay? Even if we are not yet professionals in our own fields, we can still lend a helping hand to those people. Let us also discuss the challenges to the modern Filipino family. The family, as we all know, is a major topic under the heading of social organization being an area of study of sociology. And sociology is one of the social sciences dealing with the scientific study of human interaction and phenomena. However, the study of family is not exclusively for sociology only or any single discipline for that matter. Because other disciplines like psychology, history, economics can all undertake their own investigations with the family as the main subject and with each discipline having its own assumption and perspective in role. Okay? And social scientists can examine the family while employing different disciplinary and theoretical methods depending on the nature of the problem or the phenomenon under scrutiny or investigation. And so, indeed, family is an interdisciplinary study according to the eminent Filipino sociologist Belen Medina. For example, the social anthropological approach may deal on kinship and families in developed localities. And using an economist perspective, one may also investigate family in terms of financial matters and the rising cost of living in the metropolis okay, and in other areas of our society. And also the discipline of psychology may put to forefront the learning and development of family matters okay, and family problems. And lastly, historians can also trace the roots of family and the changes it had undergone over the course of time. Meaning to say, the study of the family is not really exclusive for sociology. There is what we call multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity approach in the study and understanding of family as the basic unit of the society. Now, as a social scientist, one may study the various challenges affecting the Filipino family. And it is a reality that the processes of modernization, urbanization, and industrialization have influenced the outlook or view of family members on several important matters pertaining to employment opportunities, family structure and authority, and even gender roles. For example, women now have equal access to work, diba? unlike in the past, where men are expected to be the family breadwinners. Likewise, okay, household chores can now be shared by both the husband and wife, especially if both of them have jobs. And other phenomena that may be investigated by social scientists also include the changing sex norms and behavior, the evolving concept of marriage, the effect of migration, and also the emergence of solo parent families. So marami din palang pwedeng tignan okay, ang social scientists in looking into the issues and challenges that really affect the Filipino family. Especially nowadays, marami ng mga areas of concern na uh, nagbibigay ng challenge sa Filipino family or kinahaharap ng isang pamilyang Filipino. Now, let us look into the social scientists who works 
in the society, particularly those who address the needs of social organizations. Okay. Now, to address the needs of social organizations, graduates of sociology may become exhaustively involved in community and social services. I think ito yung isa sa magandang profession na pwede nating puntahan. In my opinion, ha, because I really wanted to involve or immerse myself into the community. Okay? Napaka gaan lang ng loob kung paano makipagkapwa tao, okay? makipagmingle sa ibang tao sa society okay? by doing things that will make the society a place wherein we can really be happy or we can live happily and we can live in unity and in peace. Yan. Now, social scientists or graduates of sociology could work as child care worker, community organizer, and the like. Okay? Let me just emphasize, pwede rin kayong maging youth outreach worker later on, especially kalakasan nyo pa. Okay? para tumulong para sa nangangailangan sa society natin. Yan. Now, while sociologists are principally concerned in a family being in a family being a social organization, sociology majors also get to be employed in other fields. Okay? Sociologists can also be a member of a business and industry, can become teachers in the academy or in education can become part of the government and a researcher. Marami. Okay? In education na lang, they could become part of the academy as teachers and counselors. In the government sector, a sociology graduate can be employed as human rights officer, okay? legislative aid. Okay? In research naman, they may be hired as consumer researcher, data analyst, market researcher, or statistician. Yan. So, maraming pupuntahan rin ang isang graduate of sociology. The same with other fields in the social sciences. And then, we also have the phenomenon of environmentalism. History has proven that environmental improvement depends directly on rapid economic growth. For example, if underdeveloped countries insist on using traditional farming techniques instead of adopting modern high-yield agriculture, then their farmers might be forced by hunger to level huge tracts of land. And there is also a need to really intensify agricultural practices in order to prevent famine and forestall the destruction of wildlife. And so, with the unprecedented environmental destruction happening at a fast pace, geographers, demographers, and other relevant social scientists may need to embrace the philosophy or ideology of environmentalism that seek to improve and enhance environmental health. And so, advocates of environmentalism promote the preservation, restoration, and the enhancement of our natural resources and the natural environment in the hope of striking what we call a harmonious balance between the human population, and the natural world. There are numerous traditional environmentalists that uh, advance the precautionary approach stating that humanity should not interfere with nature until all the consequences of action have been taken into consideration. Sabi nga nila, ba? Kung pumutol ka ng isang pulo, dapat magtanim ka ng sampu. Ayan. Kasi nga, if you're going to look into the history of devastation, famine, okay, hunger, and calamities that happened 
in the history of the world. Marami talaga tayong mga pagkukulang sa environment natin. And those traditional environmentalists, naniniwala sila na we should stop interfering with nature hanggang sa bumalik sa balanse. Okay? Ang interaction between the human population and the natural world. Another wave of environmentalists is also concerned that a precautionary stance on nature could lead to even greater environmental degradation. And so, by moving forward despite uncertainties, social scientists may help in uncovering new knowledge and in increasing wealth and resources. And social scientists as environmentalists can play a very important role in the preservation, restoration, okay, and giving importance to our environment. I think we are all environmentalists in our own way. Ah, yung simple yung paglalagay ng pinagkainan or wrapper ng candy sa bulsa instead of throwing them in your surrounding is already considered to be an act of kindness that we give to our mother nature, to our mother earth. Okay? And so we are all environmentalists in our own way. In the Philippines, we have witnessed the vulnerability of our food security and agricultural products as a result of climate change disasters. Meron pa dyan yung greenhouse gases that have been increasing due to rush human activities. And time and time again, there is what we call an occurrences of El Nino and La Nina that have caused tremendous damage to the lives and properties of affected Filipinos. And with all these environmental challenges, Filipino social scientists must really continue undertaking studies in order to evaluate the impact of climate change to our environment. Diba? Recently, kailan lang naranasan ng kagayan? Yung devastating flood? Okay. At dito pumapasok yung role ng mga social scientists natin. And also, our part as members of the society. Yan. And so, urban planners, community organizers, and the like, must have to work hand in hand to address these alarming environmental concerns. This is not only the concern of social scientists, of environmentalists, okay, but it is a concern of all the members of the society. If we really live, want to live okay, in a society wherein we can still pass this beautiful society of ours to the coming generations, we must really have to take care of our environment. And taking care of our environment would mean really indulging and immersing ourselves in the protection, preservation of our environment. Indeed, professionals in the social sciences help in understanding the society in general while exerting efforts to address several pressing issues of our time. Addressing these societal issues of our time can be overcome through the works of social scientists in their specific fields and also our cooperation and our contribution in addressing these societal issues. And with all this knowledge you acquired from the lesson, thank you for listening. Okay. You are now ready to answer the activity given to you. Good luck and God bless. See you next week.